I've had the privilege of, of working with uh, Michael just about a, almost a year now. And, you know, Michael's uh, long, uh, illustrious career has always been at the forefront of technology. We were just chatting prior to coming out here from, you know, early days of uh, uh, in the military intelligence and, and using technology in that sense uh, to now really being at the forefront in the, uh, the debt collection space and uh, being 21 years with, uh, with MRSBPO. So, Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm sure the audience is really looking forward to your, uh, your insights today. Thanks. Glad to be here. You know, so uh, I have a series of questions. I'm sure we won't get through uh, all of them, uh, but because uh, I'm sure they can all, you can expound on them for quite some time. But I'd really like to start with just understanding, you know, in your perspective, how can financial services firms use digital platforms to succeed in this new age that we're in and we've been talking about all day so far? Well, I think a lot of people know about the customer facing aspects of digital technology. You know, one of the, the hardest things for all companies, but especially financial services, because they deal with a lot of data. And one of the cool things about Creatio is the no and low code. If you think about it, most companies, IT was an island. And if you wanted to do anything, you had to go to IT. What was with a tool like Creatio, all, com all employees now can become dig can become business technologists, I think is the, the right term, or an analyst. They can get access to data. They can use data. They can actually help automate their jobs to be able to do things. So that is a, is a huge enablement from an employee perspective. And on the back end, a lot of financial services companies are connected to a bunch of vendors, but often they're connected to a huge back end, kind of like monolithic vendor that's handling all of their processing. You know, one of the promises of FinTech was it was going to change everything, but that promise until very recently has not been realized. And really in the last year or so, you're starting to see major changes all over where technology is now layered on top of each other, almost like by a, a platform on, type of, on top of a platform in order to accomplish something. So that particular, particularly the digital enablement of a financial service company is truly seeing massive changes. You've seen all these different apps, all these new offerings come out, come out to be. And all of that is possible through the digital technologies and enablement that's happening. That's, that's great, Michael. So I guess the, the inverse of that, I, I question your opinion of, you know, what are the risks associated with firms that, that don't you know, adapt to this, that, that uh, go the non-digitization route? What risks do you see? I think history shows that when companies don't keep up with technology, when they don't embrace technology, or when all of a sudden they just sit on their heels and say, you know what, nothing's going to change. We'll let someone else you know, do things and, and we don't have to adapt. The digital technologies are enabling companies to adapt faster than others. So if you don't begin today, and if you haven't begun already, by not embracing digital technologies and multiple aspects of your business, you're gonna be left out. As an example, if you only embrace customers, those companies that are embracing the changes for their vendors or other facets of the business, those companies will succeed. So those companies that don't adopt it, don't embrace it. And we saw this during the pandemic, right? Where companies that didn't spin faster, did not pivot faster, did not embrace it faster, they were left out when they saw their revenues decrease and some of them went out of business completely. Absolutely fair points. So, you know, we get often asked about uh, the adoption of the organization, the reaction to this. In your experience, was it easy or, or difficult to, to get organization-wide buy-in uh, when referring to, of course, to these digitization initiatives uh, that you've been speaking about? Well, we began before the pandemic and as did a lot of companies. And the pandemic, of course, everyone says, you know, helped accelerate it. 
for us, we were several years in, we had, be, we had begun the digital journey probably about four years ago, where we began all of the different customer outreaches and we began changing a lot of our core infrastructure. The, the, it's more like a snowball, right? You know, you begin it and you've got to get buy-in from all of the executives, all sectors of the company in order to do it. At first, it's not easy, you know, and typically it might be driven by operations, it might be driven by IT, it might be driven by finance, it might be driven by, you know, a specific vendor via a new contract, whatever the initial driving force was, in order to do it right, it really has to be embraced across the company. So it's a hard discussion to begin, but it must begin. Thank you, Michael. Let me, uh, let me go on to a, a little bit different topic. Um, when you think in the larger spectrum of the, the digital age we're in now, are you seeing any downsides to it? I would tell you that, you know what, the thing with digital is that, you know, mistakes get magnified. You know, it's very easy into, you know, in the old days you would make a change and that change didn't necessarily have a wide ranging ripple effect mm -hmm. that the uh, changes uh, that uh, happen now do. So the, you know, the flip side to that is being digital enables a lot more different types of compliance, rules and regulations, uh, technology to be in place. But really, I would say it's the magnitude of changes. It's really easy to have a wide ranging mistake. And probably a good example of that is Facebook. Look what just happened yesterday. You know, they too made soon, a change. Too soon, Michael, too soon. <laughs> Please. <laughs> You know, it, it's one of those things, you know, one little change can ripple all the way across and have a, a massive effect. Yeah, no, that, that's absolutely true. We're, we're all facing it in the entire businesses. I think we're, we're down from that. So it, it sounds like obviously you're a believer in all this transformation. And so I'd like to talk about it in terms of something you mentioned early on was about um, aligning around customer needs. What would you articulate are the, the key focus areas for a digital leader that really they they shouldn't miss if they want to ensure getting that that kind of ultimate result, that maximum benefit around the you know using this transformation to align customer needs. Well, you know the the old word is really omni-channel. You know you've got all these different mechanisms and ways to communicate to customers, and typically in the old days those channels were not connected to each other. One of the, the great things that a tool like Creatio allows is the ability to connect all those channels together, allows you to understand the behavior that's channel spe specific. And let's face it, no customer communicates over one channel alone, right? It just doesn't happen. Customers communicate over multiple channels for multiple reasons. You know, whenever there's usually a real big problem, Customers want to call, right? You know, right. and for transactional things, well, email might work or a text might work for notification or a quick transaction. So, but other things you may want to go out to a website, learn more, research more, look at histories of something and do it. But as time goes on, those channels all have different characteristics. And it's hard without a digital tool to manage all of those channels appropriately and, is, and to optimize them to enhance customer experience. And I think, Michael, from some of our prior conversations, you know, we've talked about, it's not just that there's this omni-channel that you want to hit them in different areas, but that at different times, kind of the texture of that ongoing communication needs to switch channels back and forth seamlessly, as opposed to, you know, I've started through chat, I'm only ever going to stay in chat, right? Yeah, that's right. And really, I'll, I would use the word, it has to be choreographed. Okay. And you know, that's where something like machine learning and AI helps you understand what is the right, what is the best way to paint that canvas of customer experience so that the customer feels 
unique and they feel fulfilled and most of all that you care right because that's what yeah. people people want to feel it inside that the company cares about them i agree with that and, and you you're bringing me to my next question because you you touched on some obvious you know other technology buzzwords ai machine learning and in your role obviously you know you're a technology evangelist so what are some of those technologies that you believe will kind of be be dominating the enterprise uh, landscape here in the in the near future. Uh, do we have all day to, to talk about this? Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, I, I, no. But I, I could go on also, forever. <laughs> give us just but, a couple uh, uh, a couple of insights into where your head is thinking, and and uh, you know some meaningful nuggets. Well, I touched on it before, but platforms are platforms. You know, that's where things are built upon. Uh, other technologies. And today that's, that's becoming one of the most important facets of this digitization and ability to use digital tools like building blocks to accomplish something that I think is critical. Businesses before were monolithic and they weren't really able to extend and flex and change and do it. So really businesses that adapt or become like Lego, like Legos. You can change and rearrange and, and help it. That's something that's major. The other cool technology is called digital twins. This may not be something you hear a lot, but it's where you can, in essence, build a digital model of something. So if you wanted to figure out what that customer communication would look like, you would build a digital model of your customers and maybe even all the different demographics or whatever it may be and kind of model it and play with it and see like what, what happens, what if, or you could even build an entire digital capability of your business and then play with it and model it. I'll give you a, a real good example in banks. You know, yeah. we've all talked about FinTech and FinTech kind of took one little piece, you know, at a time, similar to a Lego block, Lego block and tried to do it. DeFi where decentralized technology said, you know what, let's take that bank and let's digitize every single thing and get rid of the people and make it a complete intertwined capability. That is a is just an amazing technology that is incredible. So platforms of platforms, digital twins, DeFi, all of these are future technologies that are really incredible. Uh, that actually sounds amazing. You're right. This could be a whole topic unto itself. So let's give for those who aren't as far thinking and maybe are, are doing a little more catch up. What would be some thoughts or guidance you have about uh, earlier stage uh, machine learning or AI that you kind of mentioned before? If somebody is not as far in the journey to, to tackle those uh, yet, are there some areas that you think would be some some low hanging fruit or quick wins to get an organization on that path? Yeah, and uh, I'll tell you, and I'll call it, you know, the old days you had analytics, you know, and you had all of these different people that were necessary to kind of get a result. Nowadays with the low code and no code, and like Creatio has the AI integrated with it, you're able to get data and to be able to play with it sooner. And because you can go out and grab data yourself and see it, you can take a look and look at it. So I would say start with the, the low code and play with it, grab data, see what happens. And a lot of the technologies are enabled directly within Creatio. And I think it was demonstrated earlier where you can, you can always do like a Visio like sort of thing and just draw it out there and do it. So that, that to me would be the way to do it is to play with it and don't be afraid to fail. You know, that's, that's got to be the overriding most important technology thing with all of this data is, you know, tools like Creatio allow you to democratize the data. And that means you get it in the hands of everybody. Everybody has access to it. And that's, that's really the greatest thing is to put that tool in people's hands so they can play with it. So the best place to start with it is get a tool like Creatio with the low code, no code, let people play, let them experiment. That's where the greatest benefit and value will be from this type of tool and technology. 
I, I really love that advice. So let, let's stick on, uh, you know, we're, I know we're running shorter on time now. So let's stick on that, that theme of advice. You know, earlier in the keynote, uh, when we did a poll uh, about asking people where they were in their journey, I think greater than 50% were kind of in that earliest phase. So um, you've just given some advice about kind of in the early days when they have a low code technology, maybe you can give some guidance around how they can manage some of the, the internal kind of selling and consensus building around the leadership and, and getting over that initial hump to where this is just part of their business and the way they think, so, you know, since you're further into the journey uh, than, uh, than many. So there's probably, a, you know, a lot of different ways uh, to do it. But one of, the, one of the easiest, you know, depending upon what level you are in the company, and I think that to some degree, all companies now are becoming technology companies. And that's a realization that is beginning to permeate to all different types of industries. You know, there's an old saying, software eats everything. And I mm -hmm. think today that that's very true. So probably what I would do is I would find articles that illustrate the person's point and the need to change in their specific industry and forward it and say, hey, this company is doing this, this competitor is doing this, this competitor is doing that, and begin to increase that awareness that change needs to happen for survival. Because companies that don't change won't survive. So knowledge is power. I would use other people's knowledge because more than likely this individual or individuals or their team, they've tried to get the message out and they haven't been successful leverage other people, leverage other sources, get it out and show those articles to make a point to help them show the technology out there. And a lot of the technology to begin with is at no charge or free to try. Use it and make it, make it, make available demos and try it to prove your point. So I, I do have, with the remaining time, I do have one question. I, I don't know to the degree that you're willing to share any of the, the secret sauce or anything that you're, you're looking at for yourselves. But when I think of, you know, you've, you've been at this firm, MRS is not uh, a new firm in the space and you're, you're doing evangelical things yourselves to compete. Instead of having FinTech invade your space, you're innovating at a faster pace to kind of break, put barriers up to others. Maybe you can just share a little bit about what it, how is MRS approaching this technology and some of the exciting things in your future that you see for a space that many people might not be thinking about as, as the innovator. So uh, I'll tell you, Andy, it's a great question. And you know, one of one of the things I think we do differently is we're not afraid. You know, most companies are afraid to fail. Most companies are afraid to try. One of our greatest hallmarks is we're not afraid to fail and to fail again and to fail again and to fail again until you achieve something. So I would encourage everybody to try something, do something, try the technology, play with it. I, I love that word because as kids, you know, we try things, we, we do things, we, we're not afraid use the technology, try it, test it, and don't be afraid to fail. Do something. Amazing. Thank you so yeah. much. I, I, this has been a, a great talk. Let me turn it back over to our host. But one more time, thank you so much for joining us and sharing.